Welcome back guys. Now let's continue with the topic of intestinal secretions. Now there are different types of cells which are present in the intestine. What are these cells? Goblet cells, introcytes and panic cells. See, goblet cells are the ones which are associated with the production of mucus. Mucus. I just want you to recap that what are the cells which produce mucus in the stomach? They are surface mucus cells also called as foveolar cells. So surface mucus cells or foveolar cells are the ones which produce mucus in the stomach. Now, what are the cells which are associated with the production of mucus in the duodenum? The cells are called as Brunner glands. Okay, so the Brunner glands are the ones which produce mucus in the duodenum. We have already discussed that. Now, in the same way, goblet cells are the ones which produce mucus in the intestines. Now, what are these enterocytes? Enterocytes are the ones which produce intestinal juice. Intestinal juice are succus entericus. Okay, so intestinal juice or succus entericus, which is uh, having a lot of digestive enzymes for the protein digestion, uh, uh, lipid digestion, and carbohydrate digestion. Now, what are these panic cells? Panic cells are the ones which are present in the deep of the uh, crypts of Lyburcon, which are associated with the production of defensins. Okay, so defensins and lysozyme. See, these are the chemicals which are protecting the body from microbial organisms. Okay, so some important points about the panic cells I want you to remember. See, the panic cells are pro present in the bottom. Okay, panic cells are present in the bottom of the crepts of Lyburcon. So, okay, in the, in the intestine, there are these crepts, intestinal crepts. So, in the bottommost part of the intestinal crepts, there are these cells called as panic cells, and these panic cells are secreting molecules like defensins and lysozyme which are antibacterial in nature. Now after this let's discuss about some GI hormones. Guys the GI hormones are mainly classified into two types. What are they? They are secretin family as well as gastrin family. Okay based on the uh, type of receptor they are using the GI hormones are classified into gastrin family as well as secretin family. Now let's see who are coming, which hormones, which GI hormones are coming under uh, gastrin family. Very simple, gastrin family includes gastrin. Okay, now gastrin is using which receptor? CCKB receptor, we have seen. So gastrin, which is coming from the G cells, act, going to act on the parietal cells on the CCKB receptor, helps in the production of acid. Now, Cholecystokinin, okay, cholecystokinin is also coming under gastrin family which uses again cholecystokinin receptors. Now, who are coming under secretin family? Again, very simple, secretin okay, um, just give me one second, let me correct the spelling. Okay, so secretin, glucagon-like peptide, gastric inhibitory peptide, vasoactive intestinal peptide, all these are the ones which are coming under secretin family which we will discuss in detail. What exactly is uh, uh, glucagon-like peptide, gastric inhibitory peptide and vasoactive intestinal peptide, about all this we will discuss in a moment. So at the end of the day what I want you to remember is that. J hormones are mainly classified into two families, gastrin family as well as secretin family. Gastrin family includes gastrin and cholecystokinin. Secretin family includes secretin, GLP, GIP and VIP. Now, let's have a summary about the gastrin. Yes, we have already discussed about the gastrin, secretin and the cholecystokinin. But I want to add a few more important points. See, G cells from the gastric gland are the ones who are going to produce the gastrin. Gastrin will act on the antrum of the stomach, helps in the production of acid. Now question is, this gastrin stimulate, gastrin release is stimulated by, very simple. Why do we need gastrin? Gastrin will act on parietal cells, helps in the production of acid and acid will kill any bacteria which is present in the food. So whenever you take food, in those conditions you need to have gastric acid production. So 
intake of food will cause distension of stomach so this distension of stomach is a stimulus for the release of gastrin so when you take the food there will be distension of the stomach that distension of the stomach is going to activate the g cells g cells will produce gastrin gastrin will come and act on the parietal cells and parietal cells are the ones going to produce acid okay now amino acids in the food and calcium are also going to be playing a role in production of gastrin so gastrin release is stimulated by amino acids in the food calcium and distension of stomach these are the most important stimulus and also see gastrin releasing peptide in the name itself it's there gastrin releasing peptide so it helps in release of gastrin so what are the four conditions where gastrin production is going to be increased whenever there is distension of stomach again i'm repeating whenever there is distension of stomach amino acids calcium and gastrin releasing peptide in all these conditions you will be having gastrin now gastrin production is inhibited by see gastrin is the one which helps in production of acid so we have to talk about those conditions which are anti acid okay something like see, gastrin production is inhibited by secretin we know secretin is a nature's anti acid so whenever there is secretin that inhibits the acid production how it inhibits the acid production by decreasing the amounts of gastrin so secretin decreases the release of gastrin true excessive acid normally gastrin will come act on the parietal cells helps in the production of acid once acid is there if you have enough amount of acid or if you have excess amount of acid that excess amount of acid will give negative feedback simply so excessive acid inhibits the further acid release okay and somatostatin universal thing wherever you get the somatostatin it inhibits everything somatostatin inhibits uh, gastrin it inhibits uh, insulin it inhibits growth hormone it inhibits everything okay so somatostatin which is coming from the d cells of the gastric glands inhibits the release of gastrin true and last one gastric inhibitory peptide in the name itself it's there gastrin inhibition is happening gastric inhibitory peptide decreases the amount of gastrin or inhibits the release of gastrin having said that let's move on to what are the functions of gastrin you all know gastrin helps in acid production by acting on parietal cells we know it now the same gastrin also increases the gastric emptying so what is this function first of all what is the concept of gastric emptying gastric emptying means the movement of food from the stomach into the duodenum okay so gastric emptying means food entry from the stomach into duodenum is called as gastric emptying so what our gastrin is doing if whenever there is gas uh, whenever there is gastrin it it helps in the movement of food from the stomach into duodenum so gastrin helps in gastric emptying true statement but whenever we are discussing about the secretin there we will say secretin inhibits gastric emptying cholecystokinin inhibits gastric emptying but gastrin will let the food from the stomach into the duodenum it facilitates the movement of food from stomach into duodenum true now the same gastrin also helps in the mucosal growth inside the stomach so what are the three functions of gastrin the most important function is the acid production second function is the the gastric empty increase the gastric emptying and also helps in the production of mucus in the stomach now let's talk about cck pz that is cholecystokinin pancreasamine already we have discussed this cholecystokinin pancreasamine is coming from which cells it is coming from i cells i cells in the duodenum now what is the stimulus for the release of cck pz fat rich food whenever there is fat rich food that fat rich food stimulates the release of cholecystokinin cholecystokinin will cause contraction of gall bladder there will be release of bile bile helps in emulsification of fats and digestion of fats will happen okay so fat rich food is the stimulus for the release of cholecystokinin already we have discussed and what is the receptor for cholecystokinin ckca okay so that's why gastrin and cholecystokinin they are coming under which family gastrin family why because both of them are using cholecystokinin receptors gastrin is using cck b receptor cholecystokinin pancreasamine is using cck a receptors okay now what are the functions of cholecystokinin pancreasamine see cholecystokinin cholecystokinin cholecyst means gall bladder kinin means movement contractility so cholecystokinin contracts the gall bladder true statement and whenever this cholecystokinin pancreasamine when it 
acts on the pancreas makes the pancreatic juices rich in enzymes so enzyme rich pancreatic juices are going to be released and the cholecystokinin inhibits the gastric emptying we'll discuss this in a in a moment why it inhibits see already i have taught you what is gastric emptying gastric emptying means movement of food from the stomach into the duodenum who is facilitating this process gastrin who is inhibiting this process two things one is cholecystokinin pancreasamine as well as secretin so cholecystokinin pancreasamine both of them will decrease the gastric emptying true statement and this cholecystokinin it will act on the brain causes satiety a feeling of satiety why first of all when do you have cholecystokinin whenever there is fat rich food whenever you have fat rich food you are getting lot of energy right so definitely you will get a feeling of satiety okay and this cholecystokinin also helps in production of mucosal secretions okay helps in production of mucosa so this is about cholecystokinin pancreasamine now let's talk a few points about secretin secretin from where it is coming from duodenum sir from which cells yes cells what is the major stimulus for secretin release acidic chyme secretin is antacid so whenever the acidic chyme is entering into the duodenum duodenal s cells will recognize this acid and release the secretin now what the secretin will do now secretin inhibits the release of gastrin means antacid decreases the acid production and secretin inhibits the gastric emptying okay see whenever there is secretin gastric emptying is inhibited which means the food from stomach is not going to come into duodenum at a time if at a time food comes from stomach into duodenum lots and lots of acid is going to come into the duodenum that's not good so whenever there is secretin gastric emptying is getting decreased so the food movement from the stomach into duodenum is happening very slowly okay it takes a lot of time for the food to enter into duodenum from the stomach okay whenever there is secretin little by little little by little little by little food is going to enter into the duodenum from the stomach okay not at a time so little amount of acid is coming that's getting neutralized in the duodenum because duodenal secretions burner gland secretions are having high amounts of bicarbonates even pancreatic juices are having high amounts of bicarbonates bile is having high amounts of bicarbonates okay so secretin inhibits the gastric emptying true statement secretin acts on pancreatic juice makes the pancreatic juice rich in bicarbonates the same secretin acts on bile also increases the bicarbonate secretion in the bile so wherever you listen about the word secretin secretin take this thing secretin always increases the bicarbonate levels in the secretions in the pancreatic juices increase the bicarbonates in the bile increases the bicarbonates makes the duodenal secretions more in more rich in bicarbonates to neutralize the acid coming from the stomach and to prevent the destruction to pre to prevent any damage to uh, duodenum okay and the secretin is the first hormone to be discovered in the humans and it is the nature's antacid okay now let's see what are the important points which we have already discussed about this gastrin secretin and cholecystokinin see gastrin secretin and cholecystokinin they are having some opposite actions gastrin what it is doing gastrin increases the gastric emptying okay gastric increases the gastric emptying but cholecystokinin and secretin what they are doing they will decrease the gastric emptying how to remember sir i used to remember something like this sir cholecystokinin secretin from where they are coming they are coming from the duodenum they are coming from i cells and c cells i cells and s cells which are side by side only so they are just like a neighbors okay neighbors with like neighbors some who are also good friends i used to remember like this so secretin and cholecystokinin they are coming from the duodenum from i cells and s cells which are side by side so they are just like a good neighbors or good friends friends all the time have one single goal okay so cholecystokinin and secretin which are just coming from side by side places they have a good friendship and they are on one word what is their goal the goal is to decrease the gastric emptying okay so remember like this okay guys we have discussed all the important points uh, regarding gastrin secretin and cholecystokinin one more uh, one more important point i just forget see gastric emptying we know the movement of food from stomach into the duodenum okay now what are the substances which are having fast gastric emptying and which substances are having slow gastric emptying that one point uh, i want you to teach here 
See, substances with the fast gastric emptying. Which substances are going to have very fast gastric emptying? What does I mean by see? Whenever you take carbohydrates. Now, these carbohydrates are going to enter into your stomach. My question is, does carbohydrates are getting digested inside the stomach? No. So, there is no digestion of carbohydrate in stomach. So, whenever you eat carbohydrate rich food in stomach, digestion is happening. No. So, immediately stomach is going to kick out the food into the duodenum. So, the halt of a time for the carbohydrates in the stomach is very very less. The carbohydrates are going to come into the duodenum very quickly. So, gastric emptying time is more or less. Very very less. Okay. So, substance is the fastest gastric emptying is there for carbohydrates. Okay. So, carbohydrates have a very fast gastric emptying, after that proteins. Okay, followed by fats. So, which means from this slide we can say fats are having very slow gastric emptying. Okay, so fats are going to stay in the stomach for longer periods of time. But carbohydrates very quickly enters into duodenum. Okay guys, we have discussed all the important points. See you in the next video with new concepts.